Hello. In this lecture, I will explain you how it is possible to generate Java code directly from state charts with the Yakindu state chart tool. Yakindu has quite some sophisticated code generation features and we will explore some of them uh, in this lecture. So to do this, let us go to the Eclipse environment in which we have, uh, have started to create uh, a state chart model that will be used as an example. And the example that we are going to use is a chronometer. Basically, it's, um, there is two uh, functionalities in this model, uh, which I will show you by simulating the state chart. So basically, the first functionality is a timer function, uh, which we can set uh, to a particular number of seconds by pushing the right uh, button. So when we receive the right event, we can set the timer. Let's uh, set the timer uh, to uh, a certain number of seconds. Once we are done, we click again to launch the right event. And then we can start the timer by pushing the up event here. And then uh, here we can see the timer variable will be used to uh, decrease the value of the time that has been memorized, which is 21 seconds. So if we start running, the, we start counting down from 21 till 0 and when it's finished the uh, timer will start ringing uh, but then you will see this when we come in the ringing state in the meantime i can also stop the timer and go to the second functionality by using the left event and then uh, what we will do is we go to the second part of the state chart which, which has a stopwatch stopwatch functionality so basically here in this stopwatch functionality uh, we can have a simple simulation of a stopwatch. So let's uh, start running. When I click on up, uh, the up event will be launched and we start uh, running the stopwatch. So here you'll see that the total time of the stopwatch is increasing uh, stepwise. I can also record partial lap times by uh, using the up event again and then if I do this, then we will see that uh, the lap time has been stored. In the meantime, the total time is continuing to increment and uh, we go back to the running state after five seconds. Okay, so now let's go back to the uh, timer functionality. So we used his two history states here to be able to go back from one function to the other. So if you use left, we go back to the timer and then we see that the timer continues to decrement until it reaches one. Uh, zero and then we start ringing. So let us now have a look on how we can generate code for this state chart model. So to do this we can simply uh, create a uh, what is called a code generator model. So using the Yakindu, one of the Yakindu wizards, you already have one wizard for creating state chart models, we have another wizard which we can use for generating code. So we will use this code generator model, click on next, we have to provide a name for this model, which is basically a simple text file. We will give it the same name as the state chart, so chronometer, but the extension will be different. Okay, then we have to select the state chart for which we want to generate code. So in this case, there's only one state chart, so I'm going to select this one and I click on finish. So now what will happen is you see a new uh, code generator model has been created, it's called chronometer.sgen. And this one is the one that takes care of generating the source code of the chronometer state chart for the target project, which is in this case timer chrono watch, and in a particular target folder that is, has been specified and that is by default uh, source generated. So you will already see that here a whole bunch of source code has been generated automatically for us, which contains uh, interfaces for the state machine uh, timer interfaces because in our state machine we use uh, timer functions functionality and also uh, here we have interfaces for the chronometer state machine itself and a representation of the chronometer state machine java class so so here we already see that the code has been generated for us so this is the first step um, now uh, the second step is to to see how can we uh, actually link this generated code uh, or use this generated code in 
some Java code that we want to develop ourselves. So to show this, I have already uh, cheated a bit because I have created my own uh, main Java class in which I access this uh, generated code. Uh, so I will start explaining this right away, but I see that there's still an error here. Uh, apparently, so I'm making reference to the source code of Yakindo, uh, which is used here, but we see that there is a timer the timer service of Yakindo that cannot be found. And the reason is that if we want to use the timer functionality of Yakindo in the Java source code, we have to add some extra uh, specification here, namely the fact that uh, we have to use the timer service as well. Um, so this is explained in the documentation on the Yakindo website, uh, why this is needed, but basically, if you add these general features, timer service true, then you can uh, start uh, using the timer uh, functionality in your Java code. So I do this, I save uh, this, and now the error has gone in my main Java code. So now let's see what is the most important thing in the, the main Java code. Well, uh, here you'll see the main function before showing how it works. I will just uh, run this Java code and then you can see here on the right hand side in this uh, Java console that actually what is uh, going on is that we are starting to run a particular scenario of the execution of a state chart and the scenario that I'm running here is one that I have explicitly uh, specified in the main uh, method of my Java class. So basically I just implemented this to show how we can actually access the functionality of the state machine directly from within the Java code. So how did I do this? Well, basically, if you look in the main function of the Java code, then the first thing that you have to do is to instantiate a new state machine. So we are going to create a new instance of the chronometer state machine class. Remember that this chronometer state machine is one of the models that is, uh, it's one of the classes that is provided here that is automatically generated from the state chart model, this one. So we create an instance of our state machine and we put it in the variable as m here. And then we specify that we have to use the timer service for this state machine because we have to deal with uh, timed behavior as specified in the chronometer. Uh, let me go back to the state chart to show this. So here, for example, we see things like, um, see here, after five seconds return, every one second do something. So here we clearly make use of this timer functionality and that's why we need this timer service. So this timer service is the one that I just added in my, uh, my uh, code generator, timer service true, and this is the one that we are actually using in this uh, Java file. So here we specify that the state machine will use the timer service, and then we simply have to start running the state machine. To do this, we are going to uh, initialize the state machine and enter in the initial state of the state machine, which basically means that we will directly go to the idle state of the state machine. So if you don't remember this, let me go back to the state machine and show this. So basically we start going following the initial state and then we go here to T underscore idle. So this is what happens after running these first two lines. So we send the init and enter uh, method to the state machine. And then we, start, we have started running. Now we are inside the timer functionality of our state chart and then we can start uh, running this. So when we are inside the timer functionality, what can we do? So let me go back again to the state chart. And then we can see, for example, if I'm in idle state, I can, for example, wait for a write event and then I'm going to the set timer state and there I can either use the up event or the left event to start setting the time of my timer. So, how can we do this directly from Java? 
Well, to race an event, uh, we are going to use the method race and then followed by the name of the event. So the generated code will automatically, for all possible events that are specified in the state machine, have corresponding methods which are called race and then followed by the name of the event. And where are these um, uh, methods? Well, basically, uh, for this, there is uh, another method here sm.getSCIC. So the SCI means, uh, if I'm correct, state chart interface. So we are going to get from the state chart interface, uh, whose name is called C, uh, we are going to get uh, to launch the right, uh, the right event. Um, well, I can maybe I can show this uh, in the chronometer state machine class that is generated automatically. So here we see indeed that in this state machine uh, there is uh, a class which is called uh, S. Okay. Uh, SCIC implementation, which is an implementation of the interface SCIC, and there basically you see all the implementations of all the events, the write event, which can, you can access by doing race write, the up event, race up, the left event, race left, uh, and then also some timer events. All of these, they are uh, specified here in the implementation and also of course in the interface. So basically here you see the public interface for the state machine has all these events, raise right, raise up, raise left, and has uh, also methods to access the um, variables that are available in the interface. So basically, actually, if you see all of this uh, right here, then this is nothing more than a literal transcription of the interface that is actually specified in our chronometer state chart, because basically here we see this is the interface for which uh, the Java code has been generated. So in the interface, we see all the events, right, up, and left. We see all the variables used, uh, mem timer, timer, total time, lap time, and ring. And for all of them, there will be getter methods that are generated in the corresponding interface in Java and in the corresponding Java implementation. So that's basically all there is to it. So this means that we can directly now access and launch events or check the values of uh, these variables from within the Java code. So the first thing we do is to raise the right event. By this, we know that now in our timer functionality, we are going to set the number of seconds of the timer. Well, actually I'm going to do is, I'm just going to simulate uh, three cycles of the state machine. So to do this, I write a loop of three and in each loop I basically just run a new cycle of the state machine. So this means uh, in every every time I pass in the loop there is a new step that will be executed in my state machine using the run cycle command because there is a cycle based uh, semantics of how the state machines are executed and just to make it a little bit uh, easier to see what happened there will be a uh, a sleep of one second, so I will always wait one second before launching the next cycle, and then I will print some information on the console. This is basically the, the things that you have seen here. So after each cycle, I'm basically going to print on the console the values of the variables uh, that I have used in this particular part of the state machine. So if you want to see the implementation of printing timer, uh, it's here. Basically, uh, the information of the timer that's printed is normally just the value of the mem timer value, uh, variable in the state machine, which is accessed by, by asking the state machine in its interface to get the mem timer value. And the value of the timer variable is the same. In the state machine, through its interface, we get the timer value. Um, okay, this is in the in all the normal states. If we are in the ringing state, in that case, we will simply print that the state machine is ringing. Okay, for printing stopwatch, we have something similar. So we basically access the values of the variables and we print them out using system out print line. Uh, basically, it's always the same thing. Uh, whenever we access the state machine, we either use run cycle for a next step in the state machine 
or we raise some event uh, we raise some other event and always after each re event that's raised we do another run cycle we raise another event we do another run cycle and so on and this continues and this is the way in which uh, I have written a small uh, scenario in which I'm executing every single step of the state machine so let me run again uh, this code and now you, that we have seen how it works I will um, show here on the right you will see the code when it's running and it's printing stuff on the screen and at the same time I will browse uh, here on the left hand side uh, to, so that you can see what is actually being executed so let's run we start initializing the end timer then we shall do different values we start the running timer and this we are now here then we go in the next we start ringing that uh, and then we are in switching to stopwatch so now we are running this part now we are in stopwatch lap time mode which are we executing stopwatch normal mode and switching back to timer so you see that the behavior that was executed here is actually simply following all the steps that i have explicitly mentioned here uh, once you understand how to do this you can of course start using these state machines in much more complex uh, Java code and you can also have uh, generated code for multiple state machines and you can start using them uh, together. Maybe another very uh, interesting and nice feature of the code generation uh, functionality of Yakindo is that uh, the code is automatically regenerated whenever I make a change uh, to my state chart. So for example here, suppose I would simply change the value of 5 by 10 here. So I'm going to change this in my state chart. Automatically what happens is that the code uh, that was um, present has been regenerated. And this means that now uh, if I would uh, run my uh, Java program again, uh, this behavior will have been changed because the, co the code is automatically the generated code is automatically updated whenever I make new changes to my state machine. So this means that actually uh, this makes it very nice because you can consider all the generated code uh, in here as a black box. Uh, the only thing you have to do is access the functionality of generated code through your own Java files, but um, but you don't have to touch the generated code because uh, it's always directly uh, synchronized uh, from the state machine so every modification of your state machine will directly uh, have an impact in the generated code